What's up, boys? So here on the channel, you guys know that we do not get any product samples delivered to us from manufacturers. Instead, we have a community funded system here where supporters, we all kind of pool our money together with consults, supporter money, tips, donations, Twitch subs, whatever, all small monetary sources. We pool it together. I buy the product. I review it properly with no agenda and no bias for the community. Now, that does come with two or one double-edged sword, two blades, right? The one being, the, the bad side being, you're always going to have to wait a few days after a product launch to get my review, right? Because the, 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 the mainstream guys always get a good week or two before to get their benchmarks done. I got to grind that shit in one or two days after a launch and get you the numbers, the real numbers as fast as possible, right? Now, once in a while though, the other double-edged sword also comes into play where somebody out there might get an early sample and contact me because I'm not under NDA, neither are they. So they can be like, hey, do you want to fiddle with this thing remotely? Sure. So today we got a special video for you. I had a consult with a 13900K ahead of launch. This guy bought it from a retailer and it got delivered to him. So there's no illegal shenanigans going on here whatsoever. Now, I doing benchmarks remotely is quite difficult. So I kind of recorded the screen while I guided him through the menus. It's, it's kind of eh, right? But... The, the the goal is let's just see how much faster this thing is i did a max overclock on this guy's 13900k and i tried to do whatever the easiest cpu benchmarks i could do remotely like fire strike time spy rift breaker civilization 6 that kind of stuff we got warzone in there he is a warzone player right we got warzone in there so stay tuned for pre-release nda 13900k benchmarks Okay, so I'm doing a consult for a uh, Discord supporter, right? And to my surprise, he actually has a 13900K. Now, you can see here I'm on IDA, and it does show 24 cores here, but it looks like either the BIOS of the motherboard or the IDA isn't updated enough to support this CPU yet or some information. So actually, let's just see what the CPU clocks at out of the box here. This is all just uh, optimized defaults here. So it actually is clocking the P cores at 5.5 gigahertz stock. And the E cores at 4.3 gigahertz stock ring at 4.5. So it looks like it's 300 megahertz more than the 12900 KS out of the box. And it looks like the ring is 200 megahertz more than the 12900 KS out of the box. E cores, I don't know. They're garbage cores anyway. But yeah, so far it looks pretty impressive. This video is completely unscripted uh, and on the fly. So if it's all over the place, you're just going to have to bear with it. This is what it is when it comes to consults. Okay, so now all I got him to do was go into the BIOS and turn the E cores off. Now you see we only have eight cores here, and it looks like the ring automatically clocked itself up to 4.9. So um, yeah, 200 megahertz more than the 12900K, right? Um, so it looks like if you have E cores on, you're gonna be 4.5 ring, and if you have the E cores off, you're gonna be at 4.9 ring out of the box. I don't know how far this is gonna go. I'm just going through the default values uh, right now. So we're just doing the IDA CPU test here, and it does boost to 5.5 with the E cores off as well. So those are unchanged. Obviously, it's the same behavior as before as well. It's pretty crazy seeing 5.5 gigahertz out of the box, though. That is, that's something else. Okay, so we're actually in the guy's BIOS right now. Um... Now, you can see that the Unify X that we're using here, I gave him a beta BIOS to use specifically for this, like a special BIOS, and it works with a 3900K just fine. It brings it up. Um, now, I got the RAM to 6800 to start. We are using MDI 6400C32 sticks, right? So what we want to see next, 6800 is... 
you know, kind of where MDI starts getting finicky on a 12900K. So what we want to see next is if we can actually push MDI further than 6800, right? So I'm going to go and see how high I can get this frequency to go first before I touch the timings, just to see if uh, the memory controller on the 13900K is any better. So we're going to do that next and I will be back. Okay, so we just did uh, 7,200 stress tests, and that shit passed. Uh, I mean, I was not expecting 7,200 on MDI, but it seems to work just fine. Uh, so, I mean, we're gonna try set. We're just gonna keep. We're gonna keep walking this bitch up, and we're gonna see where this lands. So, next up is 7,400. I would be super surprised if this actually worked, but we'll find out in a sec. Okay, so we just tried 7400 and it did error out and fail. So it seems like around it's like a it's like a minor a minor bump to the memory controller. I don't know if his sample is a god bin or what. It is an SP108 on the P cores. So it is a pretty good sample, right? But um yeah, so I guess you can maybe be we could maybe say the memory controller on Raptor Lake is one to two bins better than Alder Lake. So, yeah, 7200 on MDI seems to work just fine. Okay, so I just finished overclocking the system here. Um, took me a while. Now, we landed on 1.35 volts in the BIOS with load line 6 which then ends up drooping down to like 1.29, right? And then what we actually got was 5.6 gigahertz on all the cores. Um, stock was... Yeah, see how it runs quite hot, right? Stock was 5.5 at like 1.3 volts. So it comes, it comes close to maxed out right out of the box. You could probably go 5.7 if you do a D-lid or maybe a lap or something. His CPU is not lapped or D-lid whatsoever. It's only on a custom loop. So right now we're pulling 215 watts, 5.6 gigahertz, 1.29 volts. And then it's running at about 83 on the package with a custom loop, right? So it's, it is, it does clock maybe like 300 megahertz more than a 12900 KS at the same voltage, right? Okay, so first we're going to do just some simple 3D Mark ones because these are going to be the easiest to uh, A-B test, right? So we'll do uh, Fire Strike Physics and then we'll also do uh, Time Spy uh, CPU test only. And this will spit out a synthetic score of how powerful the CPU is at, um, oh, with the E cores disabled, also keep in mind, the E cores are disabled for this. It is a gaming machine, right? So physics and CPU and 7,200 megahertz RAM at 5.6 gigahertz. Okay, I'll be back with the results. Let's see. Yeah, uh, same score pretty much. So 40,714. Uh, yeah, it does say 13900K on the CPU there. Okay, go to benchmarks next. Click on benchmarks. Go to CPU uh, or uh, time spy, non-extreme. The, the one on the left there. Yeah, click on that one. Yeah. And then go uh, uncheck the demo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then hit run custom on the top right there. Yeah. Just click that. Yeah. Nice. That seemed super quick. So 19371. Okay. Okay, I'm quickly gonna run um, Fire Strike and Time Spy on my CPU here at 12900K at 5.3 and 7600. And then uh, we'll see what the score differences are here synth synthetically. So I scored 38,970 with uh, 5.3 GHz, 12900K. So that means that the 13900K is 4% faster in a synthetic workload. 4%? And that one was at 5.6 GHz. Okay, so I scored 
18, 7 to 9, which means that uh, the 13, 900K is 3% faster in time spy. So we have a 4% and a 3% in synthetics. Eight hundred and forty. That's pretty much the exact same as a twelve nine hundred K. That's interesting. Okay, you can close this. That could be an engine limit, though. Just close this out and let's move on to the next one. Um. Okay. Okay. So here's my Rift Breaker results. Pretty much exactly the same as the thirteen nine hundred K, within margin of error again. Although. The 0.1% lows are 110 here, and over here they're 122. So that's a notable, uh, that's a notable something something. 5.96, that's good, I'll close it out. Okay, so in Civilization 6, I got 6.06 .06 seconds, which is a 2% speed increase so the 13900k is two percent faster than the 12900k in civ 6. okay uh yeah turn on the one percent uh wait go down a bit further go down go down go down go down, go down. okay we'll, we'll start at that little uh, shadow there where that tree that tree is no to the right there yeah and then turn on one percent lows and just follow the road just follow the road Yeah, it's not any different, really. Than the 12900K. So yeah, it's not even it's not even using 100% uh, of the GPU there. Interesting. It's, it's, it looks exactly the same as uh, a DDR5 12900K. It's literally identical. 300 and 200. Ah, huh, interesting. That's a little disappointing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe what we were expecting. Okay, you can turn it off. That's cool. That's good enough. Well, with that out of the way, I would like to read to you a uh, a passage from the Golden Scriptures of the Frame Chasers Discord. Golden rule number one. Nothing ever changes. Golden rule number five. Never get hyped for anything ever. So if we take all those benchmarks and take a percentage average on them, the 13900K is 1% faster than a 12900K when both are tuned and overclocked. In gaming, 1%. In gaming. You gotta specify gaming because I tune machines specifically for gaming. Now for productivity, obviously you get eight more e-cores for that type of stuff, right? Um... It might have better compatibility with uh, dual rank sticks, that type of thing that which I obviously cannot test until I have a CPU in my hand. But for the average gamer that just wants to play games, buying a second hand 12900K when all the idiots go and buy this thing, that's the play. With this information in mind, I've already canceled one of my 13900K pre-orders. Why would I go spend $700 for 1%? Also, with that being said, this was with DDR5 M die. I do not know the results with DDR5 A die, nor do I know the results with DDR4 B die. But maybe add another percent or two maximum at the end of the day. Um, if you can find like a 12900K secondhand for two or three hundred dollars cheaper, you're going to be saving two or three hundred dollars for what two or three percent max, right? Yeah, this is this is big. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I kind of had a thought. It is really important to get this information out before the product actually launches. I know in my Discord alone, how many people are going to cancel their pre-orders now. Because the CPU is a dud. Right? Now, when it comes to the mainstream numbers, they are going to show higher performance gains. Because this thing does clock to 5.5 out of the box. It does hit 4.5 ring with the e-cores on out of the box. 
it goes to 4.9 ring out of the box if you turn the E cores off, right? So, out of, so basically the 13900K is kind of you're getting more of a pre-tuned CPU out of the box than the 12900K was. But if you manually tune the 12900K, it ends up being the exact same shit. The 13900K is more of like a a 12900KSX, a 12900KSR, a 12900KS Type R VTEC. Big shout out to the guy that let me do this on his PC. Um, if anybody else out there ever ends up getting early samples and uh, you want to get that information out there, don't hesitate to contact me. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of the 13900K, and I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.